Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this beautiful bracelet. We're going to be using these beads right here, and they're called Bow Trio beads. And they're three hold, and here's a couple more examples of what they look like uh, in silver. They're just beautiful, and they have some nice weight to them. So while I'm talking, I want you to set up uh, four groups of two, just like this. And now I'm gonna take a moment and tell you something, and I normally don't talk like this. <laughs> I keep my mouth shut normally, but uh, this was actually, uh, this bracelet was supposed to be in the winter issue of a magazine. Contracts were signed, everything was ready to go, and then they bumped me to next summer. And I got really frustrated and I just said, give me my designs back. And I decided sharing it with you would make me much happier. So that's what I'm doing. And it definitely does make me happier. Also, while they had my project for almost an entire year, somebody came up with a similar pendant that looks like this. And that's when I started to get freaked out because I said, oh no, I don't want people to ever think I'm copying somebody else's designs because that is definitely not who I am. And this is a pendant. You can make a pendant version. Here's one that I have strung on some leather. And once I looked at her design, we do have a lot of different things. It looks a little similar but it is completely different. Here's another pretty colorway too, just to show you silvers. So that's why I told you this story because I never ever want you to think that I would do something like that. And we're gonna go ahead and jump right in and get our prod, uh, materials ready. We're gonna use some eight pound fire line, size 11 beading needle, scissors or a thread burner. And then we're gonna use some size 11s, 8s, and 15 seed beads, some 4 millimeter bicones, only 8, 4 5 by 8 rondelles. And if you don't know how to measure the rondelles, just plop it in there like this, and it'll come up at a 5. And then you turn it the opposite way, and it comes in at 8. So you know you have a 5 by 8. And then I'm using one of these beautiful eight millimeter Swarovski square Rivoli cushion cut stones. And they are absolutely beautiful. Um, I shop at this man's website all the time. I actually stay on there for hours just looking at all the beautiful things he has. Um, but if you don't have one of these, you don't feel like going and getting one, you can use an 8 millimeter round Rivoli. That would work just as well. All right, so two yards of thread. We're going to get started. I'm going to move this to this side so I don't get snagged. I know you can't see now. All right, so we're going to start by treating these bow trios as one. We're going to pick them up from the upper holes gonna alternate so one set and then an eight one set and then an eight and you'll do that until you have four of each so four sets of bow trios and then four size eights all right just like this and then we're gonna drop it all the way down so that's what the pattern should look like Drop it down, leave yourself a tail. We're gonna pick up our work. And we're gonna tie this into a knot and you want it to grab and pull really tight. Trust me, you're gonna to wanna to bury your tail on this one because weaving back through later is really challenging. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave this tail away right now. I'm just gonna go through a couple beads and right here is where I'm gonna tuck a couple little knots in, being very careful not to grab that uh, bow trio because it is long and I don't wanna wrap it around there, but pull really hard and the knot will stick right inside of that size eight 
and then you can either cut or you can burn that tail off. We're done. And now I am just gonna run through, or we are just gonna run through all these beads again. I'm gonna do two, two full times. Just because like I said, these beads are pretty heavy. They got some nice weight to them, which I love. And they're so unique, so cool. I have a lot of other designs um, on hand while I was waiting. So lots of things to show you. So, you know, buy a bag, see if you like them. You might, you may not, you may just love them. It depends. All right, so I feel good enough right here. I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna exit a size eight. I'm gonna go down on zoom and we're gonna pick up our 11s. We're gonna pick up five 11s. We're going to jump right into the next eight. And I'm going to try my hardest to leave it down. Go slow. Oh my goodness. Because that will happen. It, it grabs your work and runs off. So just take your time at home. All right. Me, time is not my friend when I'm doing a video. So one, two, three, four, five, into the next eight. You pull. And you keep turning as I go and we'll just do that for two more sets. All right, and I'm taking my time with this one because I don't want to miss count. We're prepping to add our stone. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, um, go through the last eight right here. I'm gonna pick it up actually, and then run up through one, two, three, elevenths and stop right there. I think I, yeah, I did, I forgot to tell you. You're gonna need a button, just pull gently like this. You're gonna need a button or a clasp of your choice, but I wanted to show you this really cool button this came from my husband's grandmother's collection and it's pure silver and it's got a duck on it. Since I'm making this one for myself, I thought it'd be really cool because everybody always pronounces my name Grebe and Grebe is a duck. So I thought that'd be kind of fun. So that's just a quick little fun fact for you. All right, so now I'm gonna go back down on Zoom because this part is important. We're gonna use our three, our 15s. We're gonna pick up three 15s. And we're gonna find the middle. So the third or that middle bead of the next set. And we're gonna pull, but when we do, we're gonna keep it extremely loose. Way looser than that. So one, two, three. Find middle or third. And pull. And just repeat that all the way around. I think I got a messed up one in there. Okay. It is so hard leaving it on the board. It makes me work so slow. All right. Last group. So we're gonna go through that 11. And I'm just going to run through those three 15s if I can see. One, two, three. So I just picked up those new three 15s. That's all I did. But I want to leave it just loose, just like this. And now I'm just going to polish this a little bit. We're going to put our beautiful stone in, face up. Just like that and then I'm gonna cover the work for a second and pull and then keep pulling until you have a very very nice tight shape and now you can either pick it up or leave it on the board but see how these seed beads are moving definitely don't want that our stone will pop right out 
So I'm going to zip through here as fast as I can and go around three times. But you take your time holding on to the stone and working with all that thread is a little bit challenging, but you can do it. Just take your time. Have patience. All right. I can definitely feel it getting tighter. And I'm not, um, I usually will pull and I'll pop my needle in the board and then I really will pull because the fire line can handle it. So it's still got a lot of movement in there. I can still see a lot of um, beads moving around and I don't like that at all. It's getting there. So once you at home and definitely be careful of this because it just snagged. Just got wrapped around one of those beads. Okay. Yeah, you take your time at home. Weave through. I'm good now. It's nice and tight, nice and secure. Okay, so once you've uh, gone through it three times, weave down these two 11s. And then go right through this size eight. And I'm just gonna hold the work to show you this part. We're gonna start with three elevens, a size eight. And I'm actually gonna move those 15s because we're done. So one 11, one size eight, go through that middle hole of the bow trio. Pick up a rondelle. Go through the middle, like this. I don't really like the looks of that, but I'm gonna make it work. So an eight, three, now you wanna find that one that's down, tucked in there, and go through there, and pull. And now we'll pick up three elevens, one size eight, Go through that middle bow trio. And then a rondelle. And that's your repeat. So now you know an eight and three. Go down right in there and find that size eight. Pick up three. And an eight. Go right up into that middle one. Round and round. And then almost there. Yeah, I know these are some really loud colors and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted to highlight these beautiful bow trio beads. Um, so that's why I chose these really loud colors. You know, normally I, I don't like uh, loud, bright colors, but I thought this would be super fun to wear. One, two, three, down. There's our last stitch. And so I want you to weave now up these three elevens and poke out that eight right there. And I told you that eight looks a little wonky, but I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm gonna not be so picky this time. So now we're gonna pick up three elevens, a size eight, and go through the upper hole now of the bow trio. And then one of our beautiful bicones straight across. And we're, that's our repeat. So it's eight, now three, back down. And right here, we're gonna stop at this eight because I wanna add another pop of color in here. So I'm gonna pick up another beautiful bicone and just jump right into the eight in this direction. And then three, and eight. 
jump up. And now we know we want to add our beautiful bicone. And you know, it's funny, whenever I say I want to add a punch of color, this bicone is one that I always go to. I love this color. All right, one, two, three. Step out of an eight. And then we're going to pick up. A four millimeter and go up through the eight in that direction so in case I'm moving too fast I went down the eight and then just put that bicone on went up in that direction and now it's three and an eight and then our beautiful bicone Okay, and eight and three down. We're getting there. Bicone up through that eight. You can hear my cat yelling at me for lunch. <laughs> She's sitting out by the door. She knows. It's so weird, they know what time it is. Every day I feed them lunch at one o'clock and she knows. All right, here's our last eight and our last three. We're gonna run down this eight and then we're gonna pick up that last eight and run all the way up. And then let's see how it looks. Oh my goodness, it's stunning. Beautiful. Now we're already onto the band. That's how quick that goes. I told you the most tedious part was definitely um, adding the stone. Okay, so you know I'm not good at measuring. First, let's step out to where we need to be. So we're gonna step out of that bicone and simple herringbone. So I'm only gonna be showing you half. I'm gonna show you how to add the button and then to add the other side is just the same. So 22 rows got me a seven inch bracelet. That's, <laughs> that's as good as I can give you for information as far as measurements. You know I'm really bad like that. So I picked up four size eights. I'm coming out in this direction. I'm just gonna bring it around carefully go through that bicone. I don't want it to break and I don't want to slip again. Okay. All right, and then you give it a good pull. And I want them to lay right next to each other, but I'm gonna go up these two, back down the stack, just retracing, so through that bicone, and there, it's nice and secure, right up those two. And now it's straightforward herringbone. I don't like the way that looks, let me straighten that out. So we're gonna pick up two, go down one, and you'll see me flip and flop a lot especially when you're working with the bigger beads and you're doing a herringbone, you want to keep your tension really tight. So I'll pick up two and I'm going to go down one and then I'm going to go right back up two and I want to make sure my tension is perfect. No thread showing, no gaps. And I am rushing, so um, I don't want to bore you, but I want to show you how easy it is to attach the button. So two, down one, up two. Very, very simple stitch. I love the herringbone though. I think it looks so pretty on as a ring or a band or bracelet. I use it a lot. Okay. 
I don't think I'm going to make you watch me do 22 rows. Because I thought I could move a little bit quicker, but definitely not. Going as fast as I can here. Pull down a little bit harder too. And you don't have to worry if it starts to look a little crooked because that's why I had you pull so much thread. And I'll talk to you about that in a little bit when we're going to reinforce. I kind of wanted to finish at least one side. But see how it's loosening up? I don't want that. So I gotta pull down really hard. But I know it's not the funnest thing to watch, so I apologize. All right, so 22 rows. I'm going to stop in a minute and count just to see where I'm at. I should be pretty close. It keeps loosening up there. All right, let me do a quick count. I'm at 19, cool. So I will be able to show you. So here's 20. One and if I didn't keep getting snagged on the corner of my board, it'd move a lot quicker. So, 22. There we go. Now, all I did was I added two 11s and then a size 8. Then I added four 11s and the shank of my button. Four more 11s and I'm gonna slide it down and I'm just gonna go right back through that 11. I mean that eight, excuse me, the eight only. And then we're gonna pick up two 11s and I don't know what's going on here. I don't like that or that. Two 11s and we're just gonna go right back down into the work stop Four, three so just go down three and I want to make sure everything's going to lay nicely let me pull and like I said the shank is all kinds of messed up on this one but I don't care I love the actual bead uh, the button I've had forever okay so I'm coming down three I know I'm gonna have to go up and retrace so I'm gonna run up everything and I'll try to hurry along. So up and around. Okay. And then we're just going to run straight down into the work. Here we go. Run all the way down. And what my goal is, why I had you pull so much thread, we're straightening this whole band anyway. And you can go back and do the other side, you know, after you finish. But what I want you to do is you want to find the crystal directly across. We're working on the underside because our beautiful crystal's there. But So however you need to weave over to get to that area, without showing any thread and I'm gonna go this way and you don't have to follow the, the direction I'm going you can definitely use your own judgment but I'm just gonna weave down nothing but good for the work anyway 
That's why I had you pull a bunch of thread because reinforcing this is the most important part. There are a lot of sharp beads on here, so it does nothing but good for the work. So I'm gonna run down, go over. Ooh, you can hear the wind whipping out there. The weather is so weird. One day you're wearing a t-shirt, the next day it's so cold. It's just, just New England for you. Step out that eight, I mean, uh, bike home, and you're ready to begin the band on the other side by the same, doing the same thing. One, two, three, four. You always start with four. We're coming out this way, so I know I need to bring it around and go back through that bicone in this direction. Pull. And then I'm gonna go up. I'm just reinforcing, going up and around. Up those two, down, through the bicone. And then up these two. Then, 22 rows. I don't know why that, oh, I didn't step out that second one. I was gonna say that looks really uneven. <laughs> All right, so you continue for 22 rows. Keeping a nice tight tension and adding your loop because I'm sure your button's gonna be different. So each one is different. This one is really teeny, this is a little larger. So you'd keep going, and then at the end, you would add your two 11s, your eight, and then enough beads to encircle. And then what I would recommend doing is reinforcing, just running down, running through the work, down, up, and around this entire thing. That is exactly what I did with all of these. And they're all really sturdy, really straight. Here's the other green one that I just... I fell in love with greens and the silvers. It's, it's stunning. So yeah, that's the design and I really, really hope you guys enjoyed it. I was super excited to be able to share it with you. I will post this colorway and then I'll do this colorway as well. If you want the green and silver, let me know. I have all the colors. And if you want the pendant, let me know. Also, it's so easy to add the pendant. Um, I'll just tell you because it's that simple. You would exit the bicone, pick up two seed bead 11s, an eight, a crystal, an eight. And then I did six. And then go right back down that eight, bicone eight. And then you would pick up two and go through the bicone in the opposite direction and then reinforce the whole thing. And then I just slipped it on a piece of leather and then added a beautiful silver bead. And then it's adjustable at the top. And so that's how I did that. But thank you again. And um, I just want to say thanks so very much for supporting me and giving me wonderful feedback. I'm having a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this project. Give these beads a try, it's worth it. Take care and I'll see you really soon, bye-bye.